Hey everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. Finally, I decided to get out of my comfort zone and to start recording YouTube videos. Now, don't expect this to be the 16th chapel of software development videos, but instead I want this to be a place where I share my opinion about things I like. Now, enough said, let's start with the video today, which is about service objects in Ruby on Rails. <laughs> Well, yeah, mm, I guess this is the point where you should be listening to an epic music or a fancy intro, but yeah, I guess I don't have one of those yet. So at this point you might be saying, Alberto, what are those service objects? I haven't seen those whenever I create a new project in Ruby on Rails. And you are right. You won't find them whenever you create a new Rails project because they aren't in the default Rails structure. But that doesn't mean that the community doesn't use that or that many companies don't use them. In fact, in all the companies I've worked for, we have used always service objects. And also, if you take a look to the Rails guides, you will find in the autoloading guides that they are even mentioned. So this is something the community is definitely using. Service objects, also known as action objects or workflow objects, are objects in which you will typically put business logic that otherwise would be scattered throughout controllers or model callbacks. And instead of that, you would have your business logic centralized and ready to reuse. So when should you use service objects? The answer as a good Galician is it depends. And basically it depends on your team. I have worked in teams that use service objects for everything. In fact, the controller action was just one liner that simply instantiated the service object and called the main method. And that was it. Whereas I have also been in other teams in which they tried to resemble Basecamp as much as possible and had all the logic in model callbacks also model methods or controllers. So when do I like to use service objects? In my case, I like to use them, for example, when the business logic is complex and I don't like to have it in the controller or in the model. I also like to use them, for example, when otherwise the business logic would be in model callbacks that would pollute other workflows. And also, I like to use them whenever I feel that the code will be easier to read and more reusable. As you can see here, I just created a simple Rails application with some generators. I added a post model here with just a few fields, namely title, content, and timestamps. And also, I generated a post controller, simple stuff. So let's imagine that now someone asks us to have a statistics gather service because we want to gather some statistics from our posts. So where would we place that service? So from what we saw and we commented earlier, Rails guidelines say that not, well, they don't say, but they suggest, and most people use this director here, app services. So this is the one that I'm going to use. And also the good thing to, with Sidebug at this moment is that everything you put under apps directory is automatically loaded. So let's do that. So we create that under app services, as we said. And then at this point, I like to create a subfolder here, which will be a module, because as your application grows, you will see that you end up having a lot of services, let's say for users, for comments, whatever. So it's a good practice to separate your services in these folders here. So, and the name, I personally like to have intention revealing names. So, and also to have them derived from a better person. For me, 
a statistics gather would be a good naming. So let's do that and create our module posts in our class. Gather. Um, some people use, for example, service here, a statistics gather service, but I don't think that bring us a lot of value given that this is already under app services. So another example of this kind of logic would be, let's say that we have a very complex business logic in order to create posts because to build those posts, we could create a post builder service and get all this logic in here. But let's go back to our example and continue with the statistics gather. So the typical thing I would do here at this point is to have an initializer method, which would receive one post, and we will save that as an instance variable. At this point, I personally like to have some kind of reader for this post, or maybe not a reader. If I need to also modify that, I would have an accessor so that I can rely on Rails, sorry, on Ruby bare words instead of all the time referring to the at post. So I would be able to say just post and do whatever I need to do there. So what else? This service needs to do something, right? So at this point, how would I name methods? So there is a typical thing in the community. Many people do this. They simply define this call method. Although it's pretty convenient or pretty easy because you don't need to think about anything, I personally don't like it. And I don't like it because, well, first of all, it remembers me to Ruby procs and land apps, but also because it doesn't say what this method is doing. I mean, it's not intention revealing. I, I would prefer, for example, to have something like generate monthly report. And I will know that this method here generates monthly report. And you could say, okay, Alberto, well, you could name this service post monthly report statistics gather, right? Yeah, but the problem with that is that you would be able to generate that with this service, right? But what if the responsibility for this service is generating a statistics report, right? Not just monthly reports. So with this, I have the flexibility to also say that I want to generate a visitors report, right? And I can also add some private methods here that support the things that these other public methods do. So I think that's more flexible and I also like it because I know what they are doing. And that's all for today. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. And now I think it is the point where I should say those fancy things like subscribe to my channel, smash that like button and see you in my next video. Adios.